The Democrat party always tell black Americans that they can't really do something specifically for black people. They give you a bunch of excuses. They say they got to do something for everybody. Right. And this is the line they have told you all the time. And then those of us who question the Democrat party, those of us who are holding the, their feet to the fire and calling out even other black people in our community uh, to give an account of why you keep telling us to vote for this particular party who is at war against black Americans. And I explained that in our podcast, make sure you watch the Philip Scott podcast uh, that is uh, happening between the hours of nine to 10 PM central standard time um, during the week and even on the weekend as well. Uh, but Kamala Harris, Miss Chucks and Pearls herself put out a tweet that caught everyone's attention. And in the tweet, if you can see here, it says in our nation, there has been an alarming increase in anti-Semitic incidents. It's our administration introduced the first ever national strategy to combat anti-Semitism. We will continue the fight against hatred in every form. Um, you're lying, ma'am, because you have never fought anti-black racism. You never fought that. You never gave black people an anti-black hate crime bill. What black people been asking for, like for freaking forever, ever since you've been in office, you won't even put a bill up. Not even a bill has been introduced by the Democrat party to say, Hey, let's go ahead on and get an anti-black hate crime bill. Let's get that right. You want to make sure that black people can be harmed because you won't do nothing about it. But, but she did say this brother Stanley ro roll that short clip of Kamala and what she had to say. Let's really be clear about that. So I'm not going to sit here and say, I'm going to do something that's only going to benefit black people. No. So you saw, and that's a classic video from Kamala where she said that she's not going to only, she's not going to do nothing only for black people. You understand? But I went through, you know, what, uh, some of the highlights of what they want to do, uh, for, uh, fighting anti-Semitism, And I just want to read it to you and just ask some questions, um, uh, about this. Um, this is broken down in different pillars, the way it was broken down on whitehouse.gov. And I say pillar number one, they said they wanted to increase awareness and understanding of anti-Semitism, including its threat to America and broaden appreciation of Jewish American heritage. They say far too many Americans do not recognize anti-Semitism and understand its threat to our society. Black Americans know what anti-Semitism is. We know who the ADL is. Uh, we know all of that. So I'm just saying, and I think the majority of the world know what anti-Semitism is. So I don't know why you say far too many people uh, do not recognize it. You know, people know what it is. He said the U.S. government would harness our collective resources to increase education about anti-Semitism and its threat to democracy, the Holocaust, and Jewish contributions to American society. But yet you will not educate people on anti-black racism. You will not educate people about slavery, Jim Crow, redlining, the Tuskegee, um, you know, syphilis project. You won't educate them about that. You will educate them about the black codes where right after slavery, you were criminalizing black people to put them right back on a plantation, literally making up vagrancy laws. If a black man don't have a job then he's immediately arrested when he could not really get a job after slavery. You understand what I'm saying? Jim Crow and all that lasts all the way up to the 1970s, but you don't want to educate people about that. You don't want to talk about the black contributions to American society, the people who actually built the country and the people who actually innovated America with many, many, many inventions. Um, that was credited to, uh, the black uh, American people, whether it's medical innovation or whether in the area of food, agriculture, uh, whether space exploration, uh, like I said before, you would never have a NASA. It wouldn't be for a Benjamin Banneker. You wouldn't have open heart surgery. You wouldn't have, um, you know, blood, uh, transfusion or anything else without the help of black Americans. But we don't want to teach that because we don't want black people to get no credit at all for what we have done in America. Now let's say pillar number two and say improve safety and security for Jewish communities. Listen, I think it's the form of government to improve safety and security of all people's communities. Right? But let's continue. 
They say all Americans deserve they say, to practice their faith freely and live their lives without the fear of attack or harassment. Many Jews in America do not have that peace of mind. Violent attacks against Jews are increasing. Verbal harassment, bomb threats, and vandalism against Jewish people, synagogues, and community institutions remain prevalent. They say a more holistic approach to improve safety and security for Jewish and other vulnerable communities will help prevent uh, violence against Jewish communities in the near term and reduce the threat in the future. Now, we know white supremacists many times have attacked uh, Jewish synagogues, and yet we don't have this national referendum on white supremacists or white supremacy. Um, because you know good and well, if you was to criminalize racism, because that would be the only way to really do something, is criminalize racism. And anyone who do that goes to jail. Anyone says anything racist goes to jail, right? But do Democrats or Republicans do not want to criminalize racism. Mass incarceration of them folks would, would happen overnight because they can't even help themselves. Now, pillar number three is a reverse of normalization of anti-Semitism and counter anti-Semitic discrimination. Um, who's normalizing anti-Semitism? I'm just trying to understand that. Who's normalizing that? I don't know nobody who's normalizing anything. White supremacists? Yes. But anyone else? No. It said one of the most alarming aspects of the current wave of anti-Semitism is the extent to which it's become normalized. It's anti-Semitic conspiracy theories and content are rampant online and in public spaces. See high profile politicians, athletes, celebrities, I guess you're talking about you, Kanye, and others have used their influential platforms to spread conspiracy theories and Holocaust denialism. I said, yeah, that's a veil shot at Kanye. I know what that is. And say the Biden Harris administration will first and foremost continue speaking out clearly and forcefully against antisemitism and those who peddled it and urge all sectors of society to do the same. In addition, the U S government will take steps wherever it can to tackle the rise of antisemitism online. And so we also call on Congress to hold social media platforms accountable for spreading hate fueled violence, including uh, hate fueled violence on social media. Okay. It's a, including antisemitism. It's say impose much stronger transparency requirements on, on online platforms and pass legislation requiring platforms to enable timely and robust public interest research, including on the spread of antisemitism and other forms of hate. It's a, the Biden administration, um, it's a, also encourages all online platforms to independently commit to taking several actions that will counter antisemitism, including ensuring terms of service and community standards, especially cover antisemitism. Um, if you look at most um, platforms, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, that's in there already. So what are you talking about? You, you, they don't want you. It's a whole lot of things you can't say on these platforms outside of that particular one thing you're talking about. Adopting zero tolerance for hate speech, terms of service and community standards and permanently banning repeat offenders of these policies. Um, they are already doing that. But why at the government level are you getting involved with private business and what they're doing on their platforms? Why? Don't you got something else better to do? They say investing in the human and technical resources necessary to engage vigorous and timely enforcement of their terms of service and community standards. No, see what they want to do, ladies and gentlemen, is if they can get in a way where they can be the, the government is controlling all the platforms who say what, then when you criticize them, guess what? Oh, that's hate speech. Cause you're criticizing them or what they're doing. They'll try to use anti-Semitism or they'll use, uh, like you say, anti-immigrant, uh, bias or any other thing they'll try to use, right? Anti-LGBT. But the key is, is trying to stop the people from criticizing them for what they do wrong. They want only thing they want is the mainstream media talking about them because they all control. Now I say improving their capabilities to stop recommending and derank antisemitism and other hateful content. So you want to control the algorithms. Okay. On these platforms, do you see what Biden and them want to do? They, they, they already messed, messed up the country. Now they're trying to mess up even social media. It's increasing the transparency of the algorithmic recommendation systems and data. So you want the secret sauce of these websites, their algorithms. You want that too. Okay. So you control what people hear and say, got it. I said treating antisemitism as a distinct category and transparency reports. Wait a minute. Hold on. And more. Why? I mean, if someone 
is anti-black, shouldn't that uh, be just as urgent as anti-Semitism? But you say you want that particular uh, uh, form of discrimination to be set aside. But, but, but listen, and I'm, re, I'm, re, I'm going through all this. I'm, I'm building up to something. So just, just, just bad, just bad with me, uh, brothers and sisters. I go through this pillar four, build cross community solidarity and collective action to counter hate and say any effort to counter antisemitism must be grounded in work that unites Americans from all backgrounds and beliefs to work in common purpose, to stand united against hate. They say administration they say we identify and support the scaling of the most effective cross community solidarity building efforts to counter hate, including antisemitism. Say the white house office of public engagement will launch the ally challenge and say inviting Americans to describe their acts of allyship with Jewish or other communities that are not their own. Now I went through all that, just the highlights of all that to say this. Remember Kamala said that she's not going to only do something for black people. That has been the policy of the Biden Harris administration. Now they can put together executive orders for the protection of different groups. They can get laws to protect other groups, solely those groups, right? But when it's us, we can't only do something for black people. So I'm going to ask something uh, to black Americans. Why, why did you go vote for, the, for them in 2020? Why did you go vote 87% for the Democrats? Why, why did you do that? Why? I, I, I'm just curious. You had to get that Trump out. Fine. You got him out. And you in the worst opposition ever. You have been begging literally for an anti-black hate crime bill on top of reparations. If they not doing reparations, the least they could have done is an anti-black hate crime bill. The least they could have done is create a council to combat anti-black racism, but the Democrat party doesn't care about you. It doesn't care about me. They want us sitting ducks. They want us to be harmed. They want us to be killed because when we're harmed and killed. They can play this game to weaponize your sorrow, to weaponize your hurt and your pain to vote for them. Let's go back to 2020. They used what happened to George Floyd to get into the white house. They played on black people's hurt and pain and at that time weaponized it against Trump. And that's how black people came out in droves to vote 87% for the Democrats. And it was a finesse the whole time. The moment they finally got in there, the first thing their administration start doing is demonizing black people going along with the media lying, saying black people and solely black America was attacking Asian people. And then you go back and you look at the FBI numbers and you look at what really happened. And it was white supremacists attacking Asian people. They find some brother that is a uh, homeless, mental health issues, do something to an Asian person. And they, and they played the video in a loop constantly, constantly, constantly. They did that until they got that, uh, anti-Asian hate bill. Okay. And when, after they got that bill done, those Democrats that you voted for eight seven percent all of a sudden nobody was attacking Asians no more. It's like it went away. And that was a targeted propaganda against a black man and woman of America to benefit other groups. You ask for reparations, they tell you, we're talking about the Democrats. It's defensive. Democrats tell you this. Forget, we know Republicans feel. Democrats feel this way. They don't want you to have reparations, but they ain't got no problem with billions of dollars going to Ukraine. Nobody says anything about the money going to Ukraine. Not a single one. Let's really be clear about that. So I'm not going to sit here and say, I'm going to do something that's only going to benefit black people. No. Let's really be clear about that. So I'm not going to sit here and say, I'm going to do something that's only going to benefit black people. No. Let's really be clear about that. So I'm not going to sit here and say, I'm going to do something that's only going to benefit black people. No. This administration has been so anti-black. When they got in office, what's the first thing they did? Tried to destabilize Ethiopia, but it did not work. They continue the sanctions on Zimbabwe. For what? Robert Mugabe is, is passed away already. He is not the president. He expropriated land without compensation off of 4,000 
white folks over there, that land belonged to black people, not them. And you make a whole country suffer with sanctions all these years, even after Mugabe is gone away, hurting the people of Zimbabwe continuously. And Barack Obama continued the sanctions on them too. So we don't want to just, and Trump did too, all of them. It's like a universal policy to keep harming Zimbabwe. Look at what happened to Haiti during the time of the pandemic. They went over there and took out their leader because he didn't want to take certain medical decisions. They, they targeted him. Look at what's going on right now. They were dropping bombs in Somalia. They go over to Ghana and trying to tell them about how they should live and LGBT and everything else. They are threatening sanctions on Uganda for their new LGBT law, but yet they didn't threaten a single sanction on Saudi Arabia, which has the same laws, Yemen, Oman, the United Arab Emirates, all those countries have those same laws. All the Arab world has the exact same law and not one sanction has been presented by Biden to any of those countries, but how dare Uganda even put in a law like that? Extremely anti-black. Let's go to South Africa. They, their ambassador sit up here lying and trying to stir problems in South Africa, saying they're giving weapons to Russians. This is all during this Biden administration. Then look at the quality of life for the black American, how that's going down all the time, flooding black cities like Chicago, flooding those cities with, with people that just come across. Now you can say, well, Greg Abbott doing it. No, 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 no. If they didn't have those asylum laws the way they are, they wouldn't be coming because they could change those asylum laws tomorrow where they say, you can't come over here and claim asylum. You got to go claim asylum at a U.S. embassy. You can't come here. And then if you, then if your asylum goes through, then you can come here. That's a simple way to stop it. They're coming and they're using the laws to do it. And they have opened up the floodgate ever since this man been in office. But this is the people that you go run out and vote for at 87%. Never do nothing for you. Everybody benefits off of your vote. Except you. I mean, don't you feel a certain kind of way about that? That everybody benefits off your vote? And then you got some shameful, shameful Democrat shields that try to shame you if you say these things, which are truthful things, because notice when the shields are mad at myself and, 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 and all the other brothers and sisters who's, who speak in this truth, they don't say we're lying. They never call us liars because they know everything we're saying is true, but they want to get their checks because I told you it's an economy to deliver up the black vote to the Democrat party. It's an economy for that in the millions of dollars. And if they, don't deliver the vote. They don't get that, those checks anymore. It's just that simple. A lot of black men in particular are very turned off with the Democrats. Even the Democrats know they got a black men problem and they will continue to have a black men problem because as black men, they have nothing for us. Nothing. And we're tired of being, uh, talked down on and, and, and everything's a black man. And we notice they be leading the charge a lot of times on the weaponization of media and everything else on the black man. But you can see they still doing things for specific groups of people, just not black people. So you got 2024 coming up. What are you going to do in response? What are you going to do? That's the question I keep asking every night on my podcast. Well, well how are you going to handle this? I mean, they are openly hostile toward the black man and woman of America. Openly. They are waging war against the black man and woman of America. They are showing us how con much contempt they have. But if you study American history, they were the original Klan members, the Democrats. They was the original enslavers, the Democrats. They just literally, at what I'm seeing today, returning back to who they really are, the Dixiecrats. But let me know what y'all think about, you know, this, this, and, and those of you who voted for Biden, I want those of you in the chat. I mean, explain to me, explain this to me. 
Uh, do you feel comfortable voting for him again in, in 2024 since he does nothing for it for black people? And if you really think he do something for black people, then let us know, point out to me what he did specifically for black people. Cause he, he surely did specific things for other groups.